Good evening all. Last week there was a case where the patient is a case of congestive cardiac failure with unexplained renal dysfunction. The typical causes of AK was not there despite that the patient was having renal dysfunction. So the today topic of discussion is cardio renal syndrome. This video is for the medicine residents and the topic will be discussed under the following heading definition, classification, pathophysiology, diagnosis and the treatment option. I am not going into the details of the treatment but the treatment option. First definition, what is this cardio renal syndrome? In simple terms of we tell, because of one organ dysfunction, there will be a dysfunction in another organ. Either because of the heart, the kidney going for dysfunction or because of the kidney, the heart is going for dysfunction. So in technical terms, if we see cardio renal syndrome or also called as CRS, it's a spectrum of disorder involving both the heart and kidney in which there is an acute dysfunction or chronic dysfunction of one organ may induce dysfunction in the other organ. So this is the proper definition. Nothing but spectrum of disorder involving the heart and the kidney in which dysfunction in one may induce dysfunction in the other. So what are the types of CRS? Cardiorenal syndrome can occur under five categories. Few textbook mention it as type, few textbook mention this as classification. There are totally five types based on two categories where the problem starts whether it is acute or chronic based on this there are five types or five classification of crs starting from type 1 2 3 4 5 what is type 1 so we are having heart and the kidney whenever there is an acute dysfunction in the heart which leads to the dysfunction in the kidney it is called as acute cardiorenal syndrome also called as type 1 CRS. The prototypical example is MI, acute left ventricular failure. These are the prototypical examples. Suppose when the kidney goes for acute dysfunction, it leads to the impact on the heart. For example, AK. Because of the AK, the heart goes for some kind of dysfunction. That is called as acute reno cardiac syndrome the terminology starts with kidney goes to heart so acute reno cardiac syndrome also called as type 3 so in the first category we have seen the acute problem leading to one or other organ dysfunction type 1 and type 3 now coming to the chronic dysfunction a chronic congestive cardiac failure leads to gradual deterioration in the kidney function that is called as type 2 or chronic cardiorenal syndrome. This is type 2. Suppose a long standing CKD leads to heart dysfunction that is called as chronic renocardiac syndrome called as type 4. So initially 1 and 3 is acute, 3, 2 and 4 is chronic. One organ dysfunction leading to the other. So what is the fifth type or type 5? Type 5 there is a some systemic problem where kidney and heart being affected. A very good example is any kind of sepsis, shock where kidney is also having some insult where heart is also having some insult. These kind of systemic problem if it is there then it is called as type 5 cardiorenal syndrome. So there are total 5 types I have described those. And what is the time limit to say as acute or chronic? There is no standard definition. Whatever the definition we are using for AK and CKD, we can use that also. And these spectrum of disorder are being emerging. More of the textbooks are including this chapter. So probably in subsequent future, we might get a proper criteria and all. But as of now, the definition with respect to the chronicity and acute specific duration is not mentioned but whatever the criteria for AK and CKD we are taking that one only. So as I told type 5 is because of some systemic reason for example sepsis, any kind of infection for example malaria.
the patient might have aka because of thrombotic microangiopathy patient might have myocarditis or some kind of cardiac related problem so this is type 5 so putting it all together in the table you can see starting from type 1 acute cardiorenal syndrome heart failure resulting in aka the typical example is mi or acute lvf if we see the type 3 this is acute reno cardiac syndrome where aka resulting in acute congestive cardiac failure so because of some volume overload whatever the reason may be we will see in the pathophysiology when we take the type 2 crs this is called as chronic cardiorenal syndrome type 4 is chronic reno cardiac syndrome basically they are classifying based on the acute and chronic this is ckd resulting in chronic heart failure the typical examples are mentioned over there type 5 as i explained there any systemic causes leading to both involvement of the kidney and the heart so this is regarding the classification or the types next regarding the pathophysiology each class of crs having a particular pathophysiology if i start discussing everything in the whole the video time limit of 10 minutes i won't be able to complete so it is a typical example of acute cardio uh, cardio renal syndrome how cardiac dysfunction can induce renal dysfunction you can see over here there is acute cardiac insult probably because of mi acute LVF whatever it is because of this there is a release of natriuretic peptide cardiac output goes low because of that there is a decreased perfusion of the end organ there is a up regulation of the inflammatory mediators peripheral vasoconstriction there is a activation of the angiotensin 2 there is a activation of vagal glossopharyngeal nerves that is basically sympathetic and parasympathetic activation what it leads to sympathetic nerves peripheral vasoconstriction natriuresis all acts on the kidney and because of the decreased perfusion there is increased venous pressure venous congestion reduced intravascular blood volumes which leads to the renal damage along with this aldosterone some kind of salt water retention so what are the possible reasons of ak in this situation there is renal hypoperfusion tubular cell toxicity decreased O2 cell delivery, diuretic resistant. Diuretic resistant is very very important in a patient with congestive cardiac failure and organ edema. So this is a, one of the broad spectrum pathophysiology of the acute cardiorenal syndrome. But if we take chronic cardiorenal syndrome or renal cardiac syndrome, the pathophysiology almost falls in these parameters only. There are excessive flow charts. So in short, as a medicine resident, you you can make it out what are all the pathways which are involved which leads to the dysfunction of the other so how to diagnose if we come to the diagnosis is there any particular investigation to catch the invest this disease no you have to diagnose ak you have to find out the heart is involved you have to find out the kidney is involved other usual investigations only apart from that there are biomarkers to find the renal dysfunction and the imaging you what are the imaging you can do 2d echo IVC diameter, intra-arterial pressure, bio-impedance, this might be new for the medicine resident, bio-impedance is nothing but an instrument which is used to detect the volume assessment in the body, how much volume is present in the intravascular space, how much is in the interstitial space, those kind of approximation will be given by the bio-impedance machine. Relative blood volume monitoring devices are available so these are some of the additional points you have to be aware of and is the biomarker particular for only cardiorenal syndrome no this can be elevated in any kind of mi any kind of cardiac dysfunction brain arteriotic peptide some newer biomarkers similarly there are kidney biomarkers whatever the biomarkers which are elevated in aka those only there is nothing special to tell this is elevated in cardiorenal syndrome so all are biomarkers of a particular tissue injury for example biomarkers of tubular damage biomarkers of glomerular injury biomarkers of the interstitium these are all the things which may elevated in cardiorenal syndrome 
apart from this routine investigation like complete blood count kft to find any other organ dysfunction is there or not that you have to do so what are the treatment option the treatment option also changes as per the type of the cardiorenal syndrome starting from type 1 to 5 the treatment changes but what is the is, is there any specific drug only to be given in cardiorenal syndrome there is no specific drug like that you have to manage the insult suppose if there is an acute mi leading to the cardiac dysfunction which is causing the type 1 cardiorenal syndrome mi have to be treated the hemodynamic stability of the patients to be maintained if the patient is having AK, you have to find why the patient is having AK. You have to treat that. What is the particular thing you can remember with respect to the treatment option is decongestive therapy. If the patient is in volume overload with respect to diuretics, diuretic resistance form an important component in this, in this syndrome, cardiorenal syndrome. RAS inhibitors can be used. Ultrafiltrate removal during the dialysis or ISOEF, isolated ultrafiltrate removal to maintain the volume, aldosterone blockers, mineral corticoid receptor antagonist, beta blockers, neurohumoral modulator, nephrolysin inhibitors, these kind of drugs can be used. intra aortic balloon pumping and mechanical support can be given if the patient is having severe congestive cardiac failure. Last one is the transplant either heart transplant or the kidney transplant so the treatment option depends on the types and regarding the dosage how to be adjusted other parameter we have to keep the patient hemodynamically stable so in detail after this short summary video you can go through and study from up to date or any from latest article so that you will get a better idea at least the residents who are not at all aware why a cardiac dysfunction patient have AK, at least they will be aware because there is a syndrome called cardiorenal syndrome. This is what occurs like that they can be aware of. So we have seen the definition, classification five types, pathophysiology of particular type I have showed you, diagnosis, biomarkers, bioimpedance, relative blood volume monitoring machines we can use and treatment option in a short summary I have told. That's all.